know I'm a very big Toyota enthusiast um, I own one myself and it's one of those cars that's special to me so yeah um, what makes this one extra special is that it actually is another conversion which is new to the channel based on the Corollas that I've done so I've done a single beams Corolla swap I've done the 4G 20 valve and then I've done the 2ZZ GE Corolla swap and now I'm doing a dual beams so before we go further with this video please do subscribe if you haven't and do share this video to any car enthusiast or anyone who loves car or automotive content so I'm joined with the owner his name is Ibrahim so he owns this um, dual beams Corolla swap so yeah welcome to the channel oh, yeah. <laughs> nice one thanks for having me thank you so um, why this Corolla and why this specific swap? <sighs> to be quite honest, like um, I've got lots of friends, as I discussed with you um, a bit earlier, they have different brands that we're interested in. I always make it known that I don't only stick to one particular brand, like I like a lot of different cars, like you get very good BVLs, very good um, Toyotas, things like that. So I mean, these are all good brands and I always say that I like to try each of them at the end of the day and yeah dual beams um i mean the first thing that attracts many people about it is that sound definitely i mean a lot of people don't know there's like ram tubes and bell mounts inside the inside the throttle body and it and it has a very nice sound very good power as and well. i'm assuming that it's just a straight swap that you've done yep so um along with that swap is there any modifications that you've done on the motor itself Look, basically it's it's bone stock. I would say Cape Town stock as everybody else yeah. is. Um, I just got air, air mods, if you'd like to say so. Breathing um, mods. Yeah, breathing mods basically. But um, other than that, there's no cams, there's no head job. There's absolutely nothing. It's straight from the importers and it's got a 57 mil exhaust. So I've definitely got more kilowatts and more time to basically better if I should change it. <laughs> So as you guys um, might have noticed in the thumbnail, I did mention that this car does actually have a dual plenum. And by dual plenum, you might be wondering what that is. So yeah, Ibrahim's just gonna take us through what he actually done <laughs> with the plenum. Yeah, 100%. So on my side, I've been coming on the throttles now for quite quite a number of years. From golf, I had it on like side rolls, throttles. On a, on a 16 valve golf and then it um, eventually got to beams um, I love the sound that butterfly effect a lot of people will know exactly what I mean that even though you lose 5 to 10 kilowatts um, it's just something that you can't like you prepare to sacrifice it at the end of the day so I found out the, the pricing of plenums it's about in the region of say six and a half to ten thousand rand to custom make it by our local um, tuners and so forth. So I sat one day, I'm in Corona, you know, during this time you have a lot of time to self-evaluate basically um, and, and find new things to basically do and passions and so on. So I decided I was gonna build up a 20 valve um, plenum and then the day I made the adjustments with the throttles are further apart for beams compared to yeah. 20 valve. I um, I took it to the yard and I put it in in my in my storage area, and I was meant to fit it the next day. And then I looked at the dual beams intake, and that's when everything just changed for me. That evening, I sat, I assessed it, I thought about it. Everybody said it wouldn't work because you're fighting with three, four different angles. The master cylinders in the way, so they said it wouldn't work um, based on everybody else's experience. Because people prior to this basically cut their plenums or the intakes, and they and they wasted it. So I sat for two weeks, I measured, and I found there would, there, there would literally be a sweet spot. And then from there I started measuring again, um, just to make sure that I'm not gonna like, the thing's worth one and a half thousand, it's not a million, but yeah. it's still worth something. So eventually I went for it, I started to cut, and I, and I machined for two days just to get to that sweet spot. So you've done it all yourself? Huh? 100%. If it's too high, you're gonna have issues with the 
with the clearance of your strut bar which you need for stability suspension then if it's too low your butterflies and your um your screws to um, um sink the throttles will will knock against the bottom part of the bottle racing um stronger cars than me with better figures um i find that they do a slightly better i work for it but it's slightly better without tuning it so i feel that um i mean if you compare against vvl vtech um they've got data for what 15 20 years they've been around now eh? since school days for me beams has come along for the past couple of years not even 10 yet like especially in the mainstream scene, yeah. mainstream yeah so i mean we're still finding out things maybe this is something that changes the game where it's affordable and i mean someone reached out to me as far as the northern cape after watching certain videos and so forth so they asked me will i make them one up i've got three four orders now um more potentials as well and then i had to actually think of making a price for it but yeah it's it's it seems to be working very well So basically the plenum, as you can see over here, looking at the down, the angles here change completely. So the measurements here compared to there are completely different on the um, manual intake in its original form. So basically the two takes a bend, the 45 degree angles you have to clear um, by the slave, you have to clear by the master cylinder and it's things that it's completely difficult because you're fighting with four different angles at the same time. It's so quite tight to whistle space. 100%. That's why a lot of people, they don't realize when I open up my bonnet, they always think, oh, you got the dual beams intake on. How did you manage to make it work? And then when they have another look, I mean, you get the butterfly thick, low down revs, and then it sounds like a, yeah. like a, 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 a box uh, beams. When you rev higher up, you hear the stacks on, it sounds exactly the same. I can feel the air acceleration on top. There's a huge difference because I mean I had 100 mm ram tubes, um, very good ram tubes, work well. But when I put this on, the cold air that you get automatically, you save on petrol and you can feel a huge difference down under. The car is much more responsive and um, like you're getting more bang for buck at the end of the day. If anybody's interested in the plenums as well, they can reach out to me. Um, it's basically I think something like a third of the price compared to the local tuners, um, the dual beams intake has proven to be a very good flow design with air acceleration then I can custom make it um, to whatever mods anybody has in the car they can just basically let me know Obviously Beams is known for its power band and you need like a good box to run with that with nice ratios. True. So um, what box are you running on this car? Um, we basically got a C60 um, Ranix RSI gearbox. I was fortunate enough to get it um, with the whole swap and the whole deal because I left my J160 in the previous vehicle. Um, it helps you big time because when you change you stay in power band. band Beams basically makes power higher up the yeah. range compared to other makes. So if it keeps you there, you gain. Look, I would estimate say about two or three cars at the end of a quarter mile, which is very relevant without having to do any heavy expensive yeah. mods. But yeah, C60 is quite expensive also. So I noticed um, in like the Western Cape or in South Africa, there's not a lot of like bolt beams motors, eh? Very true. So um, I just wanted to ask you, like, what? future plans do you have on the motor? Do you like plan on making this car like a full track car, building it up um, or just like doing some small modifications <laughs> to the motor? Yeah, look to be quite honest, um, my baby girl uh, Zia sits right there, <laughs> my other kids sit right there, so literally it's, uh, it's more a daily more yeah. than anything else, I can't be that selfish but uh, the 
other bit of it I'm with this very understanding um, <laughs> regarding my um, passion passion 100% so I'll just do minor things to make sure it can stay reliable very soon I'm looking at getting another vehicle um, but of course I have one that's family orientated and then from there I'll eventually uh, look at going a bit of a lighter body but I'm going to be sticking with beams for a yeah. while because I've come from VTEC v um, um, I've tested Niston out as well and the way this power it delivers I mean it's the first VVT um, engine that I basically have and it's and I mean you, you drive daily in like anywhere within 0 yeah. to 4000 if so it benefits you and a lot plus it's dual VVT yeah, 100% it so my main intention is eventually just to do small things but I'm looking at hooking up the second VVT um, putting or just maybe increasing compression and then just test to see what the extra air acceleration I've yeah. got on the plenum so for the guys that's watching and who's wondering what is VVT or VVTI um, can you just give them like a description what it basically does okay VVTI um, is very valve timing um, I don't want to say injection but it basically what it does is at a certain rev you can adjust it accordingly um, it advances and, and it retards your timing so you'll literally feel it you're applying the same throttle put the vehicle under slight load and you'll feel that it automatically accelerates on its own and then it kicks out again so meaning it stops working and it lets the engine run on its own on a higher if normally yeah. after six somewhere there and that's also why I like this motor because it's not like other motors that's reliant on lift I mean we compete with those um, 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 brands and concept engine designs and we do very well under the circumstances of not having any lift so it makes a, a big difference with daily drivability Take it to nine uh, on the line nine or even slightly under nine as well because I'll just Um, I got the car faded, I wanted to make it my own, of course everybody would like to, so I made it my own type of red. Um, it's two different popular reds mixed into one, so it has a certain look in the sun and a certain look in the shade. And then the rims, I added the combination because they look similar but they're not the same. Yeah. Uh, so the front wheels is for lightweight for launching and things like that. So with that um, plenum that they have on and other mods, what figures did you make? Okay, look, basically now I made no figures yet. Um, I'll reach out to you when I when I do get there, but um, I'm looking at doing a comparison to the um, um, RAM tubes that I had, 100 moles, because that was 151 kilowatts and I think 220 Newton meters. And then now, um, like I went rolling with a couple of guys, making 240 in lighter bodies, and I pull away from them, so that's obviously telling me something, and I stay in front. So um, I want to do a comparison, and then I'll let you know, and then you can, of course, just inform everybody when it gets to that time. this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it so please comment what you enjoyed most on the video and also comment on what cause you would maybe like on the channel in future shukran to ibrahim for bringing his car out and reaching out to me um yeah i appreciate it have fun brother it's no problem but uh, shukran to you also for bringing us the content that we want to see we really appreciate it also and this is coming from a lot of different brands and different groups